Anin, Bojo. Uh, my name's Holly. Um, you can call me that, or you can call me Miss B. That's what I've been known as. Um, as with a brief little introduction, um, I'm from Hiawatha, and that's when we talk about um, the Aboriginal perspective, and I'm sure um, this has come through, but we really identify with the land. Where we're from, um, that connectivity with all creation around us. But we always introduce ourselves from where we're from. And that also talks about everything that's behind us, all of our ancestors. So when I speak of Menominee Mink, when I speak of Rice Lake, I speak of those people who have come before me. And then, of course, I speak of my children, which I have four, and my students. And we talk about the next generations. And that's why you'll see um, I wear a braid. And the braid is so important. Or you'll see braids um, in symbolism and, and you're in our, our thinking. And that's because it's that three. We have our past, our present, and our future. And they're interwoven. And um, we don't do anything today without thinking about seven ge generations back and seven generations forward. So for perspective wise, it's more than just what my grandparents have done to what I want for my grandkids. You're looking at going way back, seven generations. What has happened since then? Keeping that in mind and then also moving that forward to what do we want to see not just for grandkids but seven generations down the road. So when I speak, it's going to be very um, large in a holistic view. So you'll see that uh, circles are formed. And this is why I'm probably going to end up back over here. <laughs> because for us, we start and begin and continually go through a circle. Because in my perspective, I believe that a circle is a bunch of points vertices, a bunch of them. There's no lines, but a bunch of points. And if you can imagine a circle, and everybody in that circle, there's one person, and they stand together. And those are a bunch of points. And with those bunch of points makes that, that fluid line. So yes, your answer is correct. It's a curved line, because that's what they'll tell me. But it starts out with those individual points. So in Aboriginal perspective, for us, in our learning, and our teaching, and the way that we look at things, there is no individual. There is a bunch of points within a circle or a community in your school, in your communities, your cities, your province, the nations. We are one big circle with many, many points. And um, that's where we look at right from the beginning. So you can imagine that. I mean, you're good at this. So when we're talking about the circle, there's always a middle to a circle. Right? So we can pretend that this is the middle of the circle. And I'm asking you to do a lot of visualizing um, because I know you can. You're at that age and you can imagine in the middle a person, a thing, anything. And if these people on this side of the circle are looking and these people are looking here at the same thing, same thing in the middle, they might see it as something different, as opposed to somebody who's sitting over this way in the circle or directly behind me. So with this imagination of me standing here, let's go to the medicine wheel. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of the medicine wheel before. Have you ever never heard of it? Oh, that, okay, <laughs> awesome. The medicine wheel for us 
is a circle that's divided into four colors. And the four colors are red, yellow, black, and white. Now there's many things that are connected within those four colors, such as the growth of us. We start out as babies and we go to young adults, to the adult stage, to the elder stage. Okay? Or we also talk about um, the red nations, the yellow nations, the black nations, and the white nations. And that's loosely translated in English. But um, so prior to contact, we had knowledge of all the nations with, within the globe and certain teachings for each nation. Now, with the, also with that comes our four seasons, four directions, east, south, west, north, um, and also different parts of, um, without getting too deep into science, um, We've also divided um, living things into, um, loosely translated again, swimmers, flyers, four-leggeds, and the two-leggeds, and then within that. So there's an organization that happens, and we begin with the, that medicine wheel. So let's go back to the, the color thing. So if you're sitting over here, you're going to see the medicine wheel is black, right? If you're sitting over here, you're going to see it as white. You're going to see, over here, you might see it as, well, you are going to see it as red. Over here, we'd see it as yellow. So, who's right? Well, everyone. Everyone has something to say and give to that idea of what is in the center. So we can talk about perspectives, that meaning, okay, your cultural perspective, the four colors of the of the medicine wheel, the, the, the nations of the world, and how it's so important that everyone has that spot to give their perspective into what is the, the center of the issue or the celebration or whatever we're concentrating on in the middle, right? The other thing, too, so simply put, is the idea of having value. There's no hierarchy there. All there is is the issue that's happening in the middle or that one person speaking in the middle. But that's it. It's not that person over here in the circle is more important than that person over there. Although they see things opposite. Right? They, for us, it's the four, it's the, um, the four directions, our medicine wheel, but we have the seven grandfather teachings. And they are love, honesty, humility, bravery, wisdom, respect. Did I say humility? I always did. This always happens to me. Which one am I supposed to? Truth. Because truth is the one that in, and has all of them in there. So those things don't change. I can take that kind of um, love and, and moral character into any situation. And so that's something that has kept, kept us um, keeping those traditions, keeping language. A lot of that stuff has um, gone into secret societies and come back up. We're having interesting conversations um, recently uh, with um, people who talk of new things and they're not really that new for uh, Anishinaabe people. <laughs> I talk, and, and this is something that's very, uh, very well accepted um, and known about, although people don't believe us, um, and that's the existence of Sasquatch or Bigfoot. And we look back like, whoa, I know this is coming right out of left field. It's from a different perspective. But we have teachings about, we have a whole, he actually is the, the one that teaches us the most about honesty, about doing the right thing even though nobody's watching. Because somebody is always watching. When you live in a, a communal society or a place that is circle based, 
everybody is watching you. Hated it at your age. Hated it. I couldn't leave school to go down to get a drink from the corner store without my mom knowing about it in five minutes. But that's how that whole circle helped me through this yellow part of my life because it was difficult. Right? Helped me get ready for my, my adulthood and then eventually to be an elder. Um, when I think of the residential schools, it's, uh, it was a, a poor way and I don't think it was an education um, at all. And so, um, if anything, it just affirmed just how strong and resilient a nation we are. And we have great strength. And so when we have our little ones come in and they're complaining about snow down the neck, oh well, we're strong. And I bring that in to, to, to remember that. Because as they say, that's right there, seven generations back, has to be, it cannot be forgotten, cannot be um, uh, put to the side if I'm going to make my decisions today. Okay, and I cannot forget about those seven generations that are coming up for my, pers uh, for my decisions today. So, um, I see, um, a lot of broken parenting, and so it's reteaching and, re and becoming more of a community school, too, as well, helping our parents with the children um, as well. So that's something that's very apparent and still lives um, in our communities. It's something we deal with every day, um, and it's still, uh, still apparent like that, that, as we say, is going to take a couple of generations to heal from. Um, but the thing is, um, we cannot heal uh, through complaining either. Um, and in my perspective, I try to keep it as positive as possible and to remember the strength of my people. And when I sit with my elders, who were in those institutions, and we just lost one last fall. Um, I just think of the real people. And I think in the perspective, um, we remember that. If I